Hey, it's Thursday. We want knowledge. That means one thing. Thursday for knowledge. This week, I spoke to Lee Cuddis about the value in earthing and, in fact, the necessity in earthing. And earthing means when we take a moment to just be out in nature, ideally barefoot, just to connect ourselves with nature, with ourselves. Not something I'm into, as you can see. I'm at a skate park. It was new to me, but really interesting. And I have tried it, and I've got to say I feel more connected. So why don't you give it a try? At least have a listen. All right, take care. Bye. To me, a lush carpet of pine needles or spongy grass is more welcome than the most luxurious Persian rug. Helen Keller. Firstly, just let me thank you for coming on to the show. Um, one of the reasons I invited you on is, is I'm just going to kind of loosely go into this because it's quite abstract for myself, really, actually. Is I find myself very interesting in the in the moment at how all people and, and men i think maybe especially have come to a stage of separation from nature and i mean even in not just in terms of like living very urban lives but that actually we no longer see ourselves as animals really in a way there's almost like there's plants you know, there's the earth, there's plants, there's animals, and there's humans. And yeah. and we're not part of animals, you know, which would be really the sensible thing that we are. We're just we're just another primate, a different primate, really. So I'm very interested in one, the sort of damage that the separation from nature does to us as men. And uh, in a real sense, like just not being amongst nature and in here uh, of not thinking of ourselves as part of a, a rhythm of nature that we are and and also ways that we can sort of combat that uh, and the benefits of that. So that's largely why I, I invited you on. Um, so, I mean, you seem to have dedicated your life to it. So I'm, I'm assuming that you, you're you with me and that it's beneficial for us to to reconnect with nature on both those levels. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, it, it, it to me, it started when I started reading up about it um, at first. You know, we, as as children, we, we are born how we're meant to be. We're, we're born barefoot. We're we're born connected to things, you know, and I can't, I, I'm not sure how long it is. It's probably somewhere up to two, three years. We, we don't see ourselves separate to our mother. We're, we're this combined entity. Um, and then, you know, the ego starts to kick in and we start saying everything's mine and me, but our feet, we don't have any bones in our feet when we're children and we learn to crawl, we learn to walk. And, and the minute we, as adults, as, as, as parents, we want to put shoes on our children and it's not a natural thing and our feet don't develop. So we're immediately disconnecting humans from, from nature the minute we put a shoe on. And I think it, it started in uh, the 1940s or 50s when Nike invented the rubber sole. It, it, they, they basically disconnect us from the free electrons in, in the earth and, and the ground and the electrons give us this huge healing potential. And, you know, we even go, we go to work in cars with rubber wheels. We, we, we used to sleep on bear skins and skins in caves. And we were, we were connected by body, by, uh, by moisture um, to the, to the earth. And we were, we were earthing ourselves and we were connected in the magnetic field. But the minute we, we decided, we, we came up with rubber soles, rubber cars, you know, we would actually, um, separate ourselves on um, from beds. We now live in sky rises. You know, there's nothing that connects us to nature. And and the more we we separate uh, separate ourselves from that, the more we're just not connected. So, how can you be connected as a male? How can you be connected as a human if you've been disconnected yourself from 
from nature. You know, we've got alarm clocks that wake us up. Everything is 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 designed to disconnect us. And and the minute I kind of found that out, there's a, a very good film on YouTube um, uh, called At the Earthing Movie. You can find it on YouTube. And there's a guy called Clint Ober, who I think is up for a Nobel Peace Prize. And he he's basically he's no he wasn't a doctor, I think he was an electrical engineer, and he was having a nervous breakdown and he he decided that he wanted to go traveling around America. So he he sell gave everything to his kids, all his the money, the fortune that he'd made, and went traveling. And then one day he was he was literally watching people go by in a in a cafe and he was looking at everybody's rubber soles. And he put two and two together and came up with the fact that, yes, we've disconnected ourselves. Um, he wasn't a, he wasn't a, um, uh, a scientist. So he, he's had a long slog in actually proving that, that earthing is a human way of healing. And the minute we touch the ground barefoot, um, we've got more senses in our feet than we do other, with our hands. But we're completely disconnect, disconnected from that senses. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like um, I, someone once rephrased the term common sense to me as uncommon wisdom. As, as actually, because like, well, it's, it's not that common because most of us don't listen to it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uncommon wisdom, actually. And it, it's, you know, it's such is our obsession with with experts, really. And, uh, you know, and I'm not saying that we don't listen to experts. They've studied stuff. They know stuff. That's that's right. But sometimes you just need common sense don't you like sometimes i don't need proof i don't need scientific proof when someone says we lived on this earth connected to the earth for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years and now we've be, built all these artificial things around us and it could and it, that could not be good for us you know, I don't need a scientist to go. I don't need. It's the wrong way round for someone to have to say to someone like that. Can you prove how it's bad? You should, it's the other way round. Should be if you want us yeah. to separate from what's nat from what's natural and normal to us, you should be trying to prove it's good to us, not the other way round that it's beneficial. Yeah. To their rubbish. Shit. <laughs> it, it's you know? insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it's completely like a sort of weird emperor's new clothes thing. Um. I tell you what it made me think of as well. I was I was reading this other thing about um, not not just the need to be barefoot, but about um, crouching. So you know, like actually kind of balancing, just sitting down when you sit on a your squat, feet, squatting, squatting, and saying that the benefit of squatting is not only uh, as opposed to sitting is not only because it's better for your organs because they're not slumping down. And it's better for your back. And, you know, it is that actually there's something about the humbleness of, of lowering ourselves. And, and one of the issues that, I can't remember where I read it, one of the issues they, that they think in the, in the West is part of that ingrained superiority comes from the fact that, that we sit. Like we kind of sit on thrones. We don't, we don't crouch to the earth. And I think that that that's kind of where I go when I think about, you know, the, the, the argument that actually we should spend more time barefooted and 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 in and nature and connected to the earth than we do. Yeah, I mean, it, it it's you know you just have to look at the tribes all over the world. I mean, they they don't have you know they don't have cancer, they don't have spinal issues. They, they don't, they literally, they're so healthy. They've got everything they need. And, you know, we're the civilized ones, but, you know, disease is there or disease is, is, is not prevalent in their society. They're, they're all muscular. They're all, they're all really, really fit. You know, we have to literally physically go out. We've lost that, go out to the gyms or wherever it is to, to, to exercise. But, but connecting with the earth, I, I don't know how to explain it. It gives you the most amazing feeling. First, you've got to acknowledge You've got to acknowledge it, you know, as a man, how, how can you connect with yourself if you're not connected with that true nature, with how we, we should be as a race, as a, as a people. And, you know, we'd all connect together and we'd be around people and, and be in these tribes and, and, and feed off each other and learn off each other. And, 
and we've just got this this kind of egotistical thing going on at, at, at the moment and and hierarchy and and there's no hierarchy in in these tries but actually earthing physically walking barefoot it doesn't have to be your feet it can be your hands it can be your body you know you can be naked in 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 mud and the benefits of that calmness and that serenity and that peace that you get by just touching the earth in whatever form you want to do is is so paramount to people's well-being you know if people to do it 10 minutes a day the stress would go anxiety would go and and the minute we connect with those electrons in the ground inflammation they've tried to measure it when you connect to the ground and inflammation in the body goes they can't actually record it because it's too quick but inflammation is the pre precursor to all disease and the more you are the happier you become and the more you're in nature and see open spaces and you know we are natural beings we are as you said we are we are animals and to have that egotistical mindset that we're not is is mentally separates us immediately yeah. immediately so i don't know if you've read the book um equality beyond humanity you read that no that's no, really, no it's really interesting what what this what this um author is saying and it's another one of those things where as soon as i as soon as i read it i then almost it's almost like i have kind of like oh of course that, that makes no sense and they're, they're saying in it um that our treatment of other primates so they're looking at kind of like gorillas and chimpanzees and these things that are like one percent of dna different from us you know we're clearly i believe anyway i'm sure there's people who don't but i believe we're we're just another species of primate that's what we are we're the we're the storytelling monkey really <laughs> yeah and and um and you know so like what gives us the right to think that we have the right to be able to destroy the habitat of our closest relatives where's where's the where's the equality for them like we're talking where's where's the equality where's the interspecies uh equality where you how can we treat something like that you know that is that related to us is that close to us and it can only be because we don't see ourselves as animals as, as far as i can see it can only be that we don't see ourselves as nature it's kind of like the world's our plaything, um and every resource in it belongs to us we're really on a on a existential level you've got to believe well surely that animal over there has exactly the right amount right to whatever the earth produces as i do and I, that's the one of the things that i really like about what you're saying about earthing is that it gives a sort of practical way that you can get more connected with that sense of yourself as part of part of rather than other than you know part of nature rather than as well as nature i mean that's i mean that's what it's done for me without a shadow of a doubt i mean i six years ago i i was i was eating meat you know steak every night and and then after, over that process of time and learning you know i've become pescatarian vegetarian and now and now vegan and it it, it was just i had to do it you know, the, the more I was connecting with myself, the, the more I was connecting and not eating animals, the more you just look in the eyes of, of a chimp, you just see that it's a reflection of you. You know, you were looking at you and, and to kind of destroy that habitat is, 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 is terrible. Absolutely. You're, we are destroying ourselves if we think in an egotistical way that we are not an animal, that we are not connected you just have to look at the the masculinity of a, a ridgeback gorilla you know standing there and look them in the eye and, and it's you are it's man to man you know yeah. it, it's 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 phenomenal I mean we I live on a farm here and I I found it hard when I first got here because I was still eating meat and you know I've got a pig that I've I've literally waller around called Winkle and I never connected with them but the, the more I the more I kind of started opening myself up and, and looking into these animals' eyes, you know, I'm I'm lying in the mud with Winkle wallowing with her, and that connection you can feel the heartbeat and and the literally the love that you get from 
from a pig because they're more intelligent than dogs you know and and and, and ponies i went on um a a, a therapy uh, an equine therapy and, and that was the most amazing experience in my life i was literally in a, in a paddock on my own with a with a horse and there's me thinking either egotistically right this pony this horse is going to come up to me it's going to hug me and we're going to be it's and all this kind of stuff but it just didn't happen egotistically i thought yes this is what's going to happen it's going to love me but it just turned its back on me and they're a, really a mirror a mirror of you and all animals and it, it was only when i kind of acknowledged that I was the same as this horse or we were, we were, you know, I was, I was, my energy was standoffish and he was just reflecting my, my energy. Um, and after it, it was amazing because he, he, when I kind of released that negative energy um, and I was almost in tears actually after two hours, he kind of, he, 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 he basically defecated in, in there. And that to me was like a link of me releasing negative energy and then he, as he was going out, he was being taken out, he, he, he stopped and he turned around and he walked up to me and he kind of, he hugged me with his neck. And just that flip side of getting rid of that egotistical belief system that I had makes you more connected. And, and you know, it's now every animal, it's anything now. My cat got a duck the other day and I was gutted. You know, I was running after the cat trying to free it and, and, and you really do learn about nature through animals and and through yourself and so what do you think i mean are we touching on it there though but like we, in one way we're sort of looking at like benefit of of getting uh, of earthing and and kind of taking that time and later on we'll talk about some specifics of how people can do that um but like so we talked about what what the benefits are what's what's the damage what's the damage of not what's the damage of how we're living how you know 90 percent of us who are watching this will be i know i know like we have a particular group of people who are very connected to the sort of stuff that we do that are probably in a year and living lives that are not like that but there's quite a lot of us who are um who, who are um live in the sort of concrete urban especially me i mean i grew up i grew up in london i'm an i'm an urban boy you know that that's it um so you know I've, I've never been barefoot and all that kind of stuff apart from on the beach on holiday what's what's the damage it's doing to me oh christ that's a biggie i i think i think the world is showing us at the moment what damage it's doing what damage we're doing to it because we're just we're one entity we're one organism and I think that, that what's happening at the moment is the culmination of what man has been doing to the planet and brothers and sisters, and, and, and it's just had enough. That's, that's the way I feel it. And I would, never have, I would never have spoken like this five, six years ago. But I think, you know, we're just damaging ourselves, ev everything. It's just we're, you know we're trying to get out into space and go on to other planets, but we've got to sort our own shit out first, you know, before we explore it. And, and I think that on a personal level, your, your health is, it's your health. You know, you lower your immune system. The minute you earth or you're connected, you, you're bolstering your immune system. And the, the, it, it's just, it's crazy. It's something so simple, something so energizing um, to you and health wise. But I think, man is really reaping what what he's been sowing and that's that without going too much depth um that is my that's my personal perspective on it you know my my wife and i we're, we're getting into a lot of uh, shamanism and being being with the earth and being with animals and and you know showing respect for everything has a spirit you know and you know I, we've got to the point now where we're even we're going to make elderflower uh, cordial. So if we ask permission to take it from a tree uh, um, and then make the cordial and then give the cordial back to the tree, you know, it's just respect and, it, and, and it's respect for yourself. And the more people wake up to these sort of little, these things that you can do to help and be part of that living organism, then, then the, the better I say.
Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I love what you're saying because, right, there's a bit of me that, like, you know, I'm city boy, skate punk, bosh, right? Like, it's, it was like for many, many years, I was exactly the same, like, hippies, like, <laughs> You know, let's not let's not have any of that. And and I often find myself in conversations now or situations where I'm like, how did, how did I not get here? Like, I didn't have this. I didn't have this. In my <laughs> um, but like, but what I'm what I'm learning, what I'm learning is that even this stuff that someone might be listening to now and saying. What's he talking about? Uh, he takes elderberries and then he makes and then he gives some back. What, what, you know, to pay respect to nature? What's all that about? It seems this is what I was talking about earlier. Like it seems crazy to some people. Like that could sound crazy to some people, but you don't have to look that far back to go. That's what we always did. We lived like that. It was a natural part of how we lived. We, had, I mean, even in. Even in, in you know in Christian Western culture, we have Harvest Festival, which is a thank you for what we've harvested, and we're going to lay some down at this altar to say thank you. Like, you're giving it back. You're giving it back. It's a completely natural thing. And one of the, the things that where my 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 thought pattern is taking me to a lot recently is what 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 is that uncommon wisdom that we've forgotten? Like, what is it that we knew that kept us living? and thriving for th thousands and thousands of years that over the last 500 say we've gone we don't need any of that we don't want any of that that don't that don't serve us anymore you know what else have we forgot what 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 obvious things are we not doing you know i, I think and it will bring us back to to men's work i think is is initiation i think it's handing down knowledge from father to son to to and become a man, you know, to become a man and hand that knowledge down and, and keep that tradition going. And I think that is what has has stopped this. That is what has ground this to a halt, is, is being in these groups of people, um, not being selfish, not being egotistical, and working as as a group. And I think. It's guidance, isn't it? It's guidance from from ancestors. It's guidance from elders, and I think that's where we've we've lost we've lost it. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about initiation. What I want to do first, I just want to reset the room a little bit. So, um, anyone who is watching this live within the Magnificent Man Project Facebook group, which is on Facebook, so if you're not watching it live, join the group, and then you will be able to watch these things live. So if you are watching it live, though, please, you can put a comment, any question you have in the comments, and we will try and deal with as many questions as we have afterwards. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, initiation uh, and men's work. I mean, we, we met each other, like a lot of people on this thing, through the Mankind Project. And, and I think one of the things that's central, certainly what I've taken from the Mankind Project is... Um, is not just a reconnection with a bigger sense of community, um, you know, and, and, and a connection to myself, but also the, the really powerful thing for me was a, con a reconnection with responsibility. You know, for me, one of the big moments I got from the Mankind Project was kind of, this is no longer just about you, boy. This is how you're going to show up as a man because this is this is a responsibility you have bigger than you you know there's children that are going to come afterwards that are going to are going to be reaping either the benefit you know or, or or repaying the debt that of the life that i've lived and if i don't sort it out now it will be my son that sorts it out and if he don't it'll be his son that has to you know um and 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 that's 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 how we met, wasn't it, through the Mankind Project? And do 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 you see a sort of? Um, I guess what I'm asking is, do you share a view that that men's work in general um, is, is about reconnecting us to ourselves and nature? Do you think that's is is that where the the secret lies in in where we where we want to go as humans? Definitely. I mean, obviously, we have to amalgamate 
you know society that we've got at the moment and 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 our modern lives but i i do feel truly deeply that we need to bring that back to nature we need to be with 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 other men like-minded men and and be in groups because that that's how we learn that's how we we should be and that gets rid of you know the the ego it gets rid of um you know um being competitive there's nothing worse than I think of having men that are competitive and that laddish behaviour, and it, and it's all down to not being uh, initiated or having any guidance from 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 other men. I I just it just seems crazy that it doesn't happen. But through the mankind project, I don't think there's a day. I mean, I was initiated when I think over a year and a half ago now. I don't think there's a day that's gone by that I've not thought about it. And for me, that's extraordinary. I mean, the impact men's work has is phenomenal and I see it in my son it's like the mate I mean even today he wanted to do a science experiment with Mentos and Coca-Cola and 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 it, and it didn't work we didn't get the Mentos we got another minute and it didn't work and and he said okay we can't waste this coke let me give it back to, to mother earth and it was you mm. know he's only seven and I think just changing ourselves helps our fathers heal helps our grandfathers heal for what they went through and we stop whatever goes going down you know traumatically wise with us we don't give it to our kids and we we break that circle so i think it's it's paramount that that we do this work this kind of work so talking about doing the work let's get a little bit practical with it all i mean i might okay. be, i might be your perfect client right because um um i grew up in london Right. I, I live in London. I pretty much have, you know, I, I, I enjoy buying stupidly expensive trainers, you know, <laughs> I, you know, um, but, you know, I was once a little bit woo, a little bit wee, and now I'm a little bit more woo woo. So I'm open. I'm open, you know. OK, so what do I do? Well, I've developed uh, I've developed a therapy called the Halo Method. And basically, it's it's mixed it's mixing earthing and mindfulness and a a, a lost art um, called the called walking meditation. And we all, we always go when we're rushing around from A to B. We're always we're always stressed. We're always rushing around. We're, we're always looking at where we want to go. You know, even even in in life, we're wanting a better house, a better car, better TV, better trainers. Um, so. It, it's a, the halo method is designed we walk around in circles which is barefoot with circles um and we have our gaze slightly down a meter and a half as we're walking in circles and what this does it it, it disconnects us from the horizon so we're not thinking about where we're going where our destination is and we're going around in circles and as we're looking down what it also does it it gets rid of the it pushes the consciousness out to the side and allows the subconscious to come out and it puts us in a bit of a, a, a trance like state. So any kind of shadow work we're working on, if we want to connect with ourselves and know what we're feeling when we don't, it, it brings that up and we can acknowledge that and address it. And it, it's a very good way of, of getting to know what's going on rather than just, you know, sitting down cross-legged in a room meditating. So it's another form of meditating, but it's a therapy. Okay. Well, we're going to make sure that all the links and stuff are put in here afterwards. Actually, Tony's done it already. Um, so <laughs> the link's already in there. Um, so people can find out more about uh, the Halo Method and what you do specifically. But for anyone who's just listening now, just maybe just interested, um, what's a few things they could do, say like today or tomorrow, that kind of help this process of earthing? Take your shoes off, you know, take your shoes off, get your, get your, your bare foot into the ground. Um, you can earth on grass, mud, uh, concrete you can. You can't earth on tarmac or wood, believe it or not, because it doesn't conduct electricity. But, but just go out. It, it takes 10 minutes for your brain pattern to change in any shape or in any meditative state. So just go out and walk, see how you feel barefoot, even if it's uh, not, you don't have to go around in circles. Just walk barefoot when you're walking the dog out, you know, anywhere, any chance you get. And and just the benefits are huge. You, you'll notice the difference. It seems really simple, 
but this is how we're meant to be. And and the minute you connect with that, you, you're starting to connect with yourself. I might have to see if I can get some little Adidas transfers for me feet. Because so there I'm are just... guys, <laughs> there are there are guys I've I've seen out there when on earthing websites that they've got trainers, and because they don't want to be seen to be wearing bare being be barefoot the whole time they cut the sole off the bottom so it looks like they're wearing trainers but they're earthing at the same time oh god that is funny because i was just thinking yeah some little adidas transfers just to, to so i can keep it keep it a little bit street while i'm being barefoot but um yeah i mean it's it is a really really fascinating subject is it because it is such a simple thing you know, the idea of just being barefoot is such a simple idea, but often these things are, you know, like meditation is a very simple idea and, you know, just sit down, try not to think for a while, just give yourself a little bit of space, you know? Um, and, and these simple things are really are easy to overlook. Sometimes I find it really easy to overlook because they're simple. I'm in, in a way, it's almost like I'm looking for something, more complicated like surely that can't just be all i've got to do is do that um so let's let so tell people about how they can get in contact with you yeah i mean all you have to do is put in my name lee cuddis and, and walk with me and it and it will basically come up with it and um i'm predominantly love instagram predominantly on instagram do a lot of work there um, so yeah, just Lee Cuddis, um, walk with me and, and you'll find me. There's no one quite like that. So I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. Fantastic. All right. Um, so we're going to finish up now. I think there's enough there for everyone to be getting on with. And, uh, I really encourage anyone who is, um, who is watching this, wherever you're watching this, give it a try, give it a try. The worst that can happen is you go, do you know what? That was a load of rubbish. It didn't work for me. Give it a try and see how it works. Like with all of these things, let's try and get past. Um, let me try and get past my mental models of how things have to be and be willing to give things a, a try and see what works. And if it works for you, keep doing it. And if it don't stop doing it. Um, so how I finish, Lee is I always finish uh, with three questions. Okay. okay. Uh, and so I just want you to answer those for me, if you will. So, no worries. What's the one question that I didn't ask you that you would have liked me to ask? Oh, I don't think there is anything, actually. I think I've, I've covered most. I think you've, you've, uh, um, a very good host. And, um, no, I can't, I can't think of anything at all. My keen journalistic mind is is really that's it. Fantastic. Um, so the other one is, what book has had the biggest influence on your life? Wow, that's a hard one because there's been a few. But at, for me, at the moment, I think "No Fear, No Death" by Tik Nat Han. And he's a Zen monk. And I go to his monastery every year to learn off monks and uh, uh, mindfulness with monks with my family. But that one, I think most people's fear, or my fear anyway, was, was death, is death and their, their attitude towards it. But the way he talks is, is very easy to connect with. And it got rid of that fear for me. So I think that book would be the one for me at the moment. Okay. Definite. Well, what's it called again? No Fear, No Death. No Fear, No Death. Okay, I'll check that out. Um, and final question. If you could go back and meet yourself as a, as a teenager, what bit of advice would you give yourself, knowing you probably wouldn't listen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what advice would I give myself? I think always look back on, on, on every five years, always, always look back on yourself and, and how you are and, and, and just be the conscious observer of, of yourself and your thoughts. You know, we all get, we all get 
hooked up in our thoughts and what's going on in our head and that narrative. But, you know, we, we have between 40,000 and 60,000 negative thoughts a day. And we always think that that's, that's us, those thoughts are us, but it's not. It, you know, we're the one listening. So that's what I'd say. But if I had to put it down to a quote, the, the one quote would be, don't always believe what you think. And that's always a good jog, you know, jogs me and, 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 and reminds me. So that's, that would be my advice to myself. Don't always believe what you think. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for coming and spending this time with us. Um, Pleasure. Anyone watching in the group, um, thank you for watching. Uh, if And if you're watching this not in the group uh, and you're watching it on YouTube, then get yourself on Facebook, get in the group, and you can be involved on the in these as they happen every Thursday at half past 3 p.m. UK time. Uh, so we're going to leave it there. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everyone. Pleasure through the group remember thursdays are for knowledge all right take care bye mm -hmm.